This video is brought to you by Mubi, a curated streaming service dedicated to elevating great cinema from all around the globe. Get a whole month free at Mubi.com slash Karsten. Hey everybody, welcome back to another What I Watched This Month September edition. Buckle up and grab a snack, it's gonna be a good one. I started this extremely packed month of watches with Pulp Fiction, have you heard of it? I haven't seen this one since I was in high school, and uh, yeah, it still holds up. What is there to say about this that hasn't already been said? The dialogue immediately hooks you, it has some of the best music supervision in any movie ever made, and despite there being endless images none have achieved the same style of storytelling as smoothly as this. I know it might seem like Pulp Fiction is untouchable and we can't critique Pulp Fiction, but first of all, I do think Tarantino has gotten a lot better at this since this movie. I don't think this is his best movie by any means. And also, I'm sorry, but I think the entire section where Tarantino inserts himself is pretty unnecessary, and if they were to at least cut that section down, it'd actually be a wall-to-wall -wall perfect movie. It's just, it's moving so well up until that point, and then it just just feels like the momentum of it just comes to a grinding halt and it just didn't work for me but what am i doing nitpicking pulp fiction i'm sorry it's too early to be doing this let's move on then i rewatched a man escaped to me this is still a, an actually perfect movie no complaints at all i think other brisson movies have affected me more on an emotional level this is very different from his others in that sense it feels more focused on action than it does reaching for the soul or something i also think it's way happier than his other films or at least more optimistic yet it's still very bleak, so what does that say? And I rewatched Old Joy. This might be a very close tie with Wendy and Lucy for my favorite Kelly Reichardt. The amount of depth she's able to capture in just 70 minutes is just astounding. It does such an excellent job at pulling you into the world of the characters, the sound design of the radio, and the music in the car, and the choice to just hang out with the characters for basically the entire film makes it so that the moments of meditation and revelation really stick with you. You feel the discomfort so viscerally, and it just really affected me this time. In just 70 minutes, it, I really feel like I'm on the trip with these guys, and I feel very sad by the end. Then I watched Moonrise. I thought this was pretty good. This is a movie about a fella who kills a fella, and what happens when he falls in love with the dead man's fiance. I didn't realize how simple and sort of basic the premise was until writing it out just now, which speaks to how great the film is. It takes this simple premise and adds a lot of character to it, both literally with how colorful the characters are in the film, and with how interesting the lead is. It's both heartfelt and a little disturbing. It's a good watch. And I watched Bottoms. I already did a video about this one, so I won't talk about it for too long, but I really loved it. It's some of the most fun I've had in a the theater all year. It is dense with jokes, the direction is really nice, I cannot wait to watch it again. And I watched Style Wars. This is a documentary about the 1970s New York graffiti hip-hop scene and the tension it caused between the artists and city officials, and I found it just fascinating. I'll admit I am pretty uninformed about graffiti, I don't know a ton about it, but it has always fascinated me, and this is both a comprehensive look into the culture and also a really vivid look at, well, society. I'm ultimately on the side of the artists, obviously, because to them it isn't a choice, and their reasons for why they do what they do really resonated with me, even if I could never see myself doing this. But it is a really great documentary in that it presents both sides to this pretty objectively, even though it does poke a lot of fun at the city officials, and leaves you thinking about it for days. I, I really enjoyed this. And I watched Sorcerer. Listen, I wasn't feeling this for a while. Basically, the entire first hour, I was struggling to stay awake and could not for the life of me figure out what people saw in this film. And then the last hour happened, and it was as if someone dumped a giant bucket of ice water on my face. It is some of the most nail-biting filmmaking I've ever witnessed. I almost ate my entire hand. It almost makes me want to revisit the first half to see if I'd like it more. I can't look past how dull that chunk of the film felt, but I do think it's worth sticking around for. There's like a five-minute section that feels like a horror movie near the end that disturbed me in ways I didn't think it could. Rest in peace, William Friedkin, what a filmmaker. Then I watched Poetic Justice. Nobody told me Tupac can act this well. What the fuck? The film itself was really great too. It is a bit weird of me to watch this John Singleton film before seeing Boys in the Hood, but who cares? It's it's still great. As a road trip movie, it nails it. As a hangout movie, it's a blast. The person who introduced this at my screening said she doesn't really see it as a romance, which I think made me appreciate it a lot more as a coming of age film. The relationships in the film aren't the healthiest, but that's kind of the point of the film, and by capturing such authentic and uncomfortable moments between the characters, the film really does achieve a humanistic perspective that was kind of uh, really nice to witness. It's a little corny here and there, but that's just the 90s, and that sometimes that's a good thing. Then I watched All About My Mother. This might just be my favorite Almodovar movie. It feels like I haven't even made a dent in his filmography, so keep that in mind, but to me, this is him at his most Almodovar. The colors are bright and beautiful, the humor is dark in all the right ways, and man, is it emotional. Like Wes Anderson, sometimes 
sometimes I do feel so overwhelmed by El Moldavar's visual style that I find it hard to break through the shell of it and feel for anything happening on screen. That was not an issue here. Cecilia Roth gives the best performance I've seen in a Moldavar movie, just some absolutely devastating moments near the end. And structurally, I, I do think it's just kind of a perfect movie. Uh, if you've never seen an Moldavar movie before, I do think this is a great place to start, as it is kind of a sampler platter of all his best traits. Then I watched You've Got Mail, and I, I thought this was decent. It's a good comfort watch. I'm sure if I watched this when I was younger, I'd have a deeper appreciation for it, but seeing it for the first time at 25, I can really only say it's a fine watch watchable time. Meg Ryan is incredible, and I have a big crush on her. Tom Hanks is delivering one of his least charming performances ever here. Truly, might be one of my least favorite Tom Hanks performances. <laughs> It's, it's not good. Then I went to TIFF and I watched <gasps> We Grown Now, Finest Kind, The Boy and the Hair in One Life, Dream Scenario, Mother Couch, Sing Sing, Knox Goes Away, The Pigeon Tunnel, The Holdovers, Hell of a Summer, Hitman, Nyad, Agro Drift, and The Woman of the Hour. If you're like, Carson, why didn't you talk about any of these? You're living under a rock. Go watch my video about the whole damn festival if you want my thoughts. Then I watched Legally Blonde and 35mm. Seeing this in a packed crowd of enthusiastic fans was one of my favorite movie going experiences ever and a really great way to come back from TIFF. This is one of those from my childhood that still really holds up and that I can say has a genuinely timeless screenplay. It's up there with Shrek, you know? It's so funny. It's never overdoing it. It's a perfect length. Reese Witherspoon's best performance. I mean, maybe it is just because I've seen it so many times, but one of the quickest watches out there. It just flies by. Can't get enough of this one. It's really fun. If you haven't seen it, you're crazy. Then I rewatched Asteroid City. Like most Wes Anderson movies, the rewatch felt like a new movie altogether just because of all the new things I picked up on. A small example is I never noticed how the pose of the alien with the asteroid mimics Scarlett Johansson's character's pose in her photo. Knowing what the movie really was, or I guess having a better idea of what it was beforehand, did allow me to sink my teeth into this a bit better, as opposed to trying to figure it all out. And yeah, I mean, not only is this one of his most unique movies, but I also can definitely confirm it's one of his saddest. I'm paraphrasing here, and most certainly getting the line wrong, but there's some line near the end of this where someone is like, she's not coming back, Augie, and it just destroys me. And that's the magic of Wes Anderson, making the simplest of lines feel so heavy and like they're speaking directly to me. This is such a great example of why he's a really great filmmaker and, uh, yeah, loved it. And I watched Sideways. Having loved The Holdovers, I felt like I really had to revisit this one after abandoning it a few months ago. And I gotta say, I really came around to it this time. For some reason, I didn't click with it earlier because I couldn't stand the pretentiousness of Paul Giamatti's character. Usually, I can look past it, but he was just too annoying to feel anything for him. But this time around, I was able to see through it a bit, and I really came around to this story. It's a lot funnier than I thought it would be. For as awful as Thomas Hayden Church's character was, I couldn't get enough of him and his douchiness. Like I said about Alexander Payne in my TIFF video, he loves making his characters suffer, and this is probably the most obvious example of that that I can think of, and because of how much he puts this character through, it did make the microscopic wins at the end of the film feel a little unsatisfying to me, or I guess pointless. The whole thing, I just felt hopeless by a lot of it, but I can still recognize it's way more nuanced than that. Just that's just how it made me feel. I guess there's just something holding this back from being a home run for me, but I'd be lying if I said I haven't been thinking about it nonstop since watching it. I did really enjoy it at the same time. Then I finished the month with Wes Anderson's new short film, The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. This was one of the best ways to spend a Wednesday morning while I ate breakfast. Because of its brevity, Wes Anderson is able to go even crazier with his production design here, and goes about as far as he can with the story within a story thing without ever losing me. You could make the case that this is like the perfect thing Wes Anderson should be making. Roll doll adaptations and short stories are kind of the exact thing he excels at, so of course this was incredible incredible and pretty much flawless, to be honest. I was just so bummed when it was over. I wish I could watch these all day, every day for the rest of my life. I also feel the need to add that I got really into The Great British Bake Off this month and have close to nothing to say about it, but other than good show, fun show. And hey, that's what I watched this month. What'd you watch? Let me know. And as always, thanks for watching. Go watch these films and form your own opinions. And before you head out, Movie is a curated streaming service dedicated to elevating great cinema from all around the globe. From iconic directors, 
to emerging auteurs, there's always something new to discover. With Mubi, each and every film is hand-selected by its team of curators. Discover the best of cinema at your fingertips, streaming anytime, anywhere. If you can't tell, after this month, there are an overwhelming amount of movies out there to watch, which is why I love Mubi. If I'm ever frustrated and don't know what to watch, I just boot up their app, and boom, I'm, I'm watching whatever's on the front page. They also have Mubi Notebook. Notebook is a print-only magazine devoted to the art and the culture of cinema. Created, prepared, and published by Mubi. Notebook is published biannually. It is a yearly subscription that includes two beautiful issues, and each issue comes with an exclusive gift, a surprise just for Notebook subscribers. And shipping is free wherever you are. Subscriptions are now open for issues four and issue five. It also smells amazing. I just, I need to add that. It smells so good. You can subscribe to the magazine now for $40 a year. Find out more at Mubi.com slash magazine. And you can try Mubi free for 30 days at Mubi.com slash Karsten. That's M-U-B-I.com slash Karsten for a whole month of amazing cinema for free. Thank you